Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Animalia part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction Basis of classification of Animalia Wherein we'll talk about levels of organization, symmetry, diploblastic and triploblastic organization, coelom, segmentation and notochord. We'll talk about the different phyla that is Porifera, Celentrata, Platyhelminths, Nematoda, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemichordata and Chordata. So, as you can see, we have got a hell lot of stuff to learn in this lesson because here we are going to talk about the fifth kingdom of Whittaker classification that is Animalia. The name itself explains itself. Here we are going to talk about animals. Even we come under this category, we human beings. So we will actually see that we have got such a wide variety of animals starting from a small animal to huge animals and we are going to talk about each of them here. So whether you talk about a small insect or a small mosquito or you talk about a giant elephant. So everything will fall under this kingdom. So we really have a huge um, number of species or huge number of animals to be studied here. So let us see. So first let us talk about the basic characteristics of this kingdom. Like as I said just now that we have got a huge diversity inside this kingdom. But there are certain features which are common to all the organisms which belong to this kingdom. So let us first jot down those few basic characteristics which define the kingdom Animalia or the presence of these characteristics make the organisms fall under the kingdom Animalia. So what are those basic characteristics? First is they are eukaryotes obviously that is their cell any, any animal cell will have all the different cell organelles with distinct membranes around each of them and they also have a distinct nucleus. So all the organisms which fall under kingdom Animalia are eukaryotes. The next feature is multicellular. All organisms are made up of multiple cells. So as we all know that unicellular organisms were the very simpler organisms like the bacteria. So they were all unicellular. But in animals they are all multicellular. Heterotrophic. That is they depend on others for their food. They cannot prepare their own food. So by now you all know what do I mean by cannot prepare their own food. It is not that you are preparing biryani in your house and you say that I am capable of preparing my own food. It is not like that. The ingredients which are used for making your biryani, they are not something which is made by you. You just go to a sh uh, the market, you purchase the vegetables, the fruits and then you prepare whatever you want. So basically you are trying to prepare something which is like which is tasty for you or which is edible for you but the, the ingredients you are which you are getting it from the market that is not prepared by you so you are dependent on plants or other animals for your food so all animals are heterotrophic mostly mobile so if I, I i would not say that all animals are mobile but most of them are mobile like in case of plants they are not mobile Right? They cannot move from one place to another. So they will be, they will remain at one fixed place. But in case of animals, it is not like that. Most of them are capable of moving from one place to another. However, there are a few exceptions who cannot, who are not mobile rather. Cell walls absent in cells. So when I talk about the animal cell, like every animal, at the, I mean, at the end of the day, the fundamental unit of, any organism is cell. So if we talk about an animal cell and if you compare it with a plant cell, in plant cell you have an additional cell wall to ensure better protection and turgidity. But in case of animals that extra cell wall is absent. So there is no cell wall in the cells of animal. It is a diverse group with over 2 million species. 
so a huge number so here in this lesson we will talk about the different groups under this animalia kingdom now as we studied in plant kingdom also since there are so many varieties so it is not possible to talk about each animal in detail individually so we will divide it into different groups and then we will talk about the characteristics of each group so that is how we will proceed with this lesson now there will be many terms which will come across which you will come across which i might not be teaching you in detail in this lesson because i have taught those things in previous lessons so please uh, it would be my advice that please go through your bio of class 9th and class 10th before you actually go through the videos of class 11th because you see they are all related so whatever you study in 9th helps you in 11 uh, helps you in 10th again whatever you study in 10th helps you in 11th so your basics should be clear okay so with this let us start with animalia kingdom so looking at the examples you have so many examples starting from so many aquatic animals like sharks and whales when you talk about terrestrial animals you have human beings uh, lions tigers rabbits mouse dog cat so many things again if you talk about small insects butterflies house flies so many things and if i start talking about the aquatic life there are there are a huge variety of aquatic animals as well some of the common examples would be crab, octopus, but there are many more variety which when we go ahead, we will talk about each of them and then you will wonder that I have never seen an animal like that. So there are many things which we do not come across in our day-to-day -day life, but they exist. So now let us look at the sub-classification of kingdom Animalia. As I said, we will now group this kingdom into different phylum so that it becomes easier for us to study. So it is classified into 10 phylum. You all know by now that what is a phylum. When we were talking about the taxonomic hierarchy, I told you right, kingdom is the topmost level. Under one kingdom, you have several phyla. Under each phylum, you again have different classes. Again, under each class, you will have different orders and so on. Right? So here we will see what are the 10 phylum into which the kingdom Animalia is classified. First is Porifera, Cilentrata, Platyhelminths, Nematoda, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemichordata and Vertebrata. So these are the 10 phylum into which the kingdom Animalia is classified. Okay, so here, a small correction here, it is not vertebrata, rather it is chordata. So in this lesson, we will talk about each of these phylum in detail one by one. We will talk about their characteristics, we will talk about the way they reproduce, we will look at examples of each of them. Now before that, we should know that on what basis did we classify this kingdom? I mean, what is the basis of classifying Animalia into 10 different phyla? So let us first try to understand the basis of classification. Now, there are a couple of things which were taken into consideration to classify this kingdom. So those important things are levels of organization, symmetry, arrangement of cells in embryo, which gave rise to diploblastic and triploblastic organization, coelom, segmentation and notochord. So these are some of the things or these are some of the parameters which were taken into consideration for classifying the kingdom Animalia. Now, you, th these words might be new to you. The coelom, notochord, they might be new to you. So what we will do is let us discuss each of these terms in detail. Let us see what do we mean by symmetry, how symmetry helps in classifying, how, what do we mean by silo, how it helps in classifying. So we will talk about each of these six terms in detail one by one. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.